So in this video I'm going to be talking about a TEDx talk which is just another talk that's been given under that, that banner that is going a long way in the service of ruining the credibility of TED talks. In particular I'm going to, I'm going to address a video about why we should all be feminists, a talk given by Nigerian author Chimamanda Adichie and it's titled Why We Should All Be Feminists. As everyone who watches this will know, who knows me, I'm going to be responding by saying why, uh, not only why should we not all be feminists, but in addition to that, why no one should be a feminist. Feminism is an ideology that, that wants to argue that everything about the world is wrong, and we shouldn't actually change very much of it. And I'll try to explain what I mean by that. In particular, it is the notion that women are getting the short end of the stick, and that the only people who are responsible for it, the ones who need to step up to the plate to fix that, are, of course, not the fully able, fully competent, fully independent women, naturally. It's all the men. I was impressed with the particular theatrics of the man who found us a parking spot that evening. And so uh, this is where she's talking about, the, there's this like elaborate uh, theatrical presentation that people do uh, with respect to uh, getting people's luggage in and out of cars, whatever. Uh, it's probably a local custom. I don't know anything about it, but that's what it is. Well, as we were leaving, I decided to give him a tip. I opened my bag, put my hand inside my bag, brought out my money that I had earned from doing my work, and I gave it to the man. And he, this man who was very grateful and very happy, took the money from me, looked across at Louis, and said, Thank you, sir! <laughs> Which, by the way, um, she talks about some things that are really good observations, and I do agree that they should be uh, dealt with. The only difference between her on that point, between her and me on that point, is whose responsibility it is to deal with it. In her universe, it's not any woman who has to deal with it. It's men who have to deal with it. My response is, if you don't like the conditions that surround your life, you have some responsibility to do something to change it. And by that, I don't mean getting up on a stage and complaining. Uh, so anyway, her male uh, compatriot... Louis, Louis looked at me, surprised, and asked, why is he thanking me? I didn't give him the money. Then I saw realization dawn on Louis's face. The man believed that whatever money I had, had ultimately, came, had ultimately come from Louis, because Louis is a man. And so, girls grew up to be women. This is a jump, uh, going to a much later part of the, uh, the video. I'm going to return to this money exchange thing when we get to the, the waiter conversation. Who cannot see they have desire. They grow up to be women who silence themselves. Listen to that. That is central to the problem with feminism. It is women doing this to themselves. It is the responsibility of women to stop doing whatever they don't like to themselves. It's not my responsibility because I have a dick to go around the world telling women what they need to be like. Women, the same as men, grow up and they'll have certain interests uh, and certain things that don't hold an interest for them. And it's on, uh, it's on them to pursue those honestly and openly, irrespective of what they think other people might want. There's something to be said for social expectations. There's also something to be said for ignoring them. Uh, if you really care about something, ignore the social expectations. However, you have to accept the consequences that go with it. Namely, when you start deviating very far from some whatever customs happen to be, you become a less attractive, and I don't mean that sexually, I mean it in a whole host of different ways, I don't mean it exclusively sexy, uh, in an exclusively sexual way. You become less attractive to the people around you. That is a choice you get to make. You, one of the problems with feminism is it wants everything in the world to be given to them, and for any choice they make to have not a single negative outcome. That is, they want to have, they want to eat their cake and still have their cake. I'm sorry, if you eat the cake, you don't get, you don't uh, still get to have the cake on the table. You have to make a decision between it, having the cake there to admire, uh, to later on say to particular desire of yours, or you may eat it. You may not do both. Now, of course, someone's going to point out, well, you can have, you can eat half the cake today and then save some for tomorrow. All you're doing is introducing more steps into the, um, the eating of the cake. Until you have eaten the last bite of the cake, you haven't actually eaten the cake yet. You've only eaten a part of it. So if you want to play that little that game, I can play it with you too. 
but I've already thought about it, so don't play it. You won't win. They grow up to be women who cannot say what they truly think. And they grow up, and this is the worst thing we do to girls, they grow up to be women who have turned pretense into an art form. I love the way that you say it's something that we've done to girls. I don't do this to girls. Maybe where you live, uh, there's this big thing where they, where they, the infamous they people, you know who, you know what they say, all those they people who run everything uh, do to girls. I don't know, I don't live there, I, I can't speak for the rest of the world. The difference between you and me is I don't pretend to. But it's interesting who's going to be swept up in that, that we. It's going to be, as you noted earlier, if you're going to be honest anyway, that women are more than half of the population. It's going to be mostly women who are doing it. And again, I'm just going to point out, not a problem for me. Or not a particular problem for me, any more than I think that uh, it should be the case that you have some baseline rules, about, you know, uh, all the obvious ones, don't cross the street without looking at those kinds of things, and then tell the people, look, here's uh, the way the society works. Uh, here's what's considered normal, here's what's considered not normal. Uh, if you want to get along with more people, you have to fall into the norm. Uh, otherwise not. Either one comes with consequences, one of which might require silencing your inner monologue a little bit. That might be uncomfortable for you. If it's so uncomfortable, then you have to go with being outside the norm. In which case, you have to accept that you're going to alienate a lot of people. Pick your poison. The universe is not created to serve exclusively you and your own private, petty interests. Make your decisions bear the consequences, but do it with a little bit of dignity and a little bit of uh, pride, or at the very least, don't try to whine too much about it. And at the very, very least, don't go blaming everyone else for the choices you make. Sometimes feel very, still feel very vulnerable in the face of gender expectations. By the way, all, all you're doing here um, is talking about, is making an observation about on um, the ordinary level of uh, social offenses is the greatest one that you can commit, failing to live up to other people's expectations. That is the root and cause of disappointment. Deal with it. You make some decisions. If you want to do things, and some things in a particular way that is not the, the local custom, you just have to accept that it's going to have people looking at you slightly askance. And by the way, for people who might want to ask me where I draw the line, I draw the line here where I draw the line pretty much anywhere. Physical violence. If it's something short of physical violence, it's not really a great problem for me, and I don't have a great deal of interest in intervening on the on behalf of other people. And by physical violence, I don't mean it has to actually... The fist doesn't actually have to have started flying yet. I mean, there's a, a lead-up to it where it's starting to get to that. And I'm, you know, that that's the... You can intervene there, too. But if it's just people expressing disapproval, you have to tolerate quite a bit of that. I learned this lesson very young in life. Um, a friend of mine, a woman... We were out, and some people had said uh, some sideways things to her, and I, uh, the same as I would, would have done at the time, and no longer do for any of my friends, is I stood up and said, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then afterwards, she pulled me off to the side, and she's, you know, hey, look, I appreciate what you're trying to do. I understand where it comes from. But the moment that you intervene on my behalf, all that says to the people who I was getting ready to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with is that I'm not able to handle it. Uh, so I appreciate that you care that much, but in the future... Don't ever stand up for me. Let me do that myself. Let me make that. Let me make that choice. And if it's a fight I want to fight, let me do it on my own, own terms, whether I win or lose. And again, so long as the line is drawn at the physical violence uh, stage, I respect that. And that, that was important for me. I was quite young at the time. Important for me to have figured out. It is the denial of a person's agency to intervene on their behalf when they're fully capable of doing it, but elect not to. And I presume that people pick and now now that I'm an, an adult, I presume that people pick and choose their own battles, once again, putting violence off to the side. And on that proviso, it is the height of arrogance for me to think that it's my place to override their decision to either not or to pursue a particular line of discourse with uh, people that they have a disagreement with. That's for them to decide on their own. Uh, now, there, as I mentioned, the, the line between physical violence and not. When I was in grade school, one of the fights I got, got in at school dealt with a little girl named Julie who had a terrible, terrible um, con congenital idiopathic nystagmus. She couldn't control her eyes. They were always shaking around, and nystagmus always jerking back and forth. And she had to wear thick glasses because, as is the case very frequently with a congenital nystagmus, it affected her eyesight. She had poor eyesight in addition to not being able to control the muscles. 
and she would get teased for that. But one boy came over and pushed her, and it was game on. I beat the shit out of him, and I still, well, I can't say I still do that because I don't hang around her, but that's where I draw the line. No matter who you are, if you're going to be in public, you are not going to please everyone. Whatever expectations the world has, you can't meet it for all people. And you just have to accept that some people are going to treat you in ways that you don't like. It is either important enough to you to stand up in your own right for your own cause, or it isn't. And if it's not that important to you, you have no right whatever to expect or demand or request that it be that important to me. I'm going to respect your decision in thinking that it is an unimportant state of affairs. The first time I taught a writing class in graduate school, <clears throat> I was worried. I wasn't worried about the material I would teach because I was well prepared and I was going to teach what I enjoyed teaching. Instead, I was worried about what to wear. I wanted to be taken seriously. I knew that because I was female, I would automatically have to prove my worth. Again, it's not because you have a vagina that you have to prove your worth. It's because you're a professional and professionals have to constantly prove their value to whatever organization hires them whether this be a company or a school, whatever it happens to be. Now, I understand that you want to think about your fashion. Fine, knock yourself out, wear whatever you want. Just accept the consequences that comes with that, the consequences that come with these decisions. And I was worried that if I looked too feminine, I would not be taken seriously. I really wanted to wear my shiny lip gloss and my girly skirt. In other words, you wanted to dress like you were just everywhere else, but at a professional uh, level work. Men don't have to deal with that, not because they're men and men are privileged. The way that you make it is by letting your work speak for itself, and that is by dressing in the same ugly, boring, non-distinct ways that you see men dressing. It is that it's you are not the important component there. The work that you have done or failed to do is what speaks for you. And otherwise, you need to blend into the background. It's a uniformity type of thing. Uniformity has a lot of advantages. It has a lot of disadvantages. But whatever the relative merits of it happen to be, it is the case that it is how the business world works. They don't care about you, not because you're a woman. They don't care about you because you, in and of yourself, are not the product being marketed. There are some exceptions to that, like sex industry, I suppose, but at the professional level. The things that you do and the lectures that you can present, the knowledge that you have that you can impart to people, that's what counts. And whatever you want to graft on top of that is something you're making up in your head. Now, once you start dressing in a way that's not just like that professional, bland, kind of unimportant way, you're going to get commentary on that, whether you're male or female. And it's not because you're expressing your femininity, it's because you're being different than the expectation set for that professional environment. It would happen to a man if he were to dress in this strange kind of way. About the only thing that you get to accessorize as a guy at the professional level is the color of tie that you wear. And even then, you have guidelines on not wearing ties that are too loud because they are distracting. In other words, it's drawing attention to you and not the product the company cares to sell. And anytime you forget what it is you're there to do, make money for someone else, is the moment that you become a liability. They enforce this very, most industries, not all, enforce this standardized blandness of you. It's one of the reasons that people complain about the crushing corporate drone kind of life. It's monotonous and tedious. It stifles your, your personal creativity in that in your own personal kind of way because no one in the business industry cares about you whether you're male or female you're just there you're a number on on a, a line on a ledger and so long as the numbers you pull in are to the net benefit of the company and you don't like uh, make waves more power to you but the moment that you well I already went over the tie thing the loudness long and short of it is blend in don't stand out. And that doesn't mean be more masculine. It means be more anodyne in what you wear. But I decided not to. Good for Instead, you. I wore a very serious, very manly, and very ugly suit. Which men 
have been doing for a long time. Now, what the, 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 the social fashions will change from time to time, and men will update their suits to one ugly thing to another ugly thing that everyone else seems to think, well, yeah, it's ugly, but we can make do with it. Welcome to being a man, although you're not, and you want to buck that trend. Fine. Buck the trend all you want, except the consequences that come with wanting to stand out and not be like everyone else. Because the sad truth is that when it comes to appearance, we start off with men as the standard, no. as the norm. If a man is getting ready for a business meeting, he doesn't worry about looking too masculine. And... No, he worries about not standing out for anything other than the utility served by the function he's, of his job. That's it. For not being taken for granted. If a woman is getting ready for a business meeting, she has to worry about looking too feminine and what it says and whether or not she will be taken for granted. No, she doesn't have to worry about that. It, that is grafting on to the situation provincial concerns. There's a lot of it there that's just superfluous. She will be taken seriously. I yeah. wish I had not worn that ugly suit that day. I've, I've actually banished it from my closet, by the way. Had I then the confidence that I have now to be myself, my students would have benefited even more from my teaching. Um, citation needed for that. What is the evidence that if you're more comfortable in your sexuality or femininity or whatever, that you're a better, you're better able to impart to your students knowledge? I don't know what you teach. I, I can't recall ever, ever teaching someone a theorem of mathematics or logic or whatever and going, you know what would really make this better for you guys? Is if I wore some clothing that I really, really liked rather than this old boring suit and tie. That would you would understand this theorem so much. It would be so much more of a profound theorem for you. You would soak up that knowledge so much more readily. If only I changed my clothes. Because I would have been more comfortable and more fully and more truly myself. I have chosen to no longer be apologetic for my femaleness and for my femininity. And I, 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 And I want to be respected in all of my femaleness because I deserve to be. Ah, there it is, that sense of entitlement, that you deserve something. Fine, you think you deserve this, that, or the other, but it's interesting that in a minute you're going to point out that the things that you deserve aren't things you have to work for. It's things that should be handed to you by men. Gender is not an easy conversation to have. Actually, it generally is... a fairly easy conversation to have, but not with feminists, because they graft on a whole bunch of bullshit, like you're doing here. For both men and women, to bring up gender is sometimes to encounter an almost immediate resistance. I can imagine some people here actually thinking, women too do safe. Some of the men here might be thinking, okay, all of this is interesting, but I don't... Oh, by the way, just to play a little game with you here, Imagine reversing who's giving the speech and talking about, pick any topic you'd like, and then advising women, take a man, advising women what they should think, how they should feel, and what their entitlements uh, should be. As a woman, you have the luxury to stand up and say whatever things about a man that you pretty much want to, which, by the way, you had some good things to say. Uh, that's abnormal for feminists, but good for you there. And that will be met without much of, much of a problem. Whereas, if a guy gets up on the stage and starts talking about what women should be like, the social expectation that you think is oppressive, the what a woman should wear, that kind of thing, they will be roundly excoriated by this worldwide coterie of phys uh, feminists. I almost said physicists. <laughs> well, that would have been silly. <laughs> you have a privilege to do that that no man has. Like that. Or I should say no man in the West and... Uh, perhaps where you live. And that is part of the problem. That many men do not actively think about gender or notice gender. It's part Let me translate. The problem is that not enough men care about what I find important. What's wrong with the rest of the world? Nothing is wrong with the rest of the world that we don't happen to devote our lives to your pet issue. Or to the, you know, prostate cancer. It's kind of important to me. Why is that not the central focus of your life? Too many women don't have that as their central focus. Why not? 
because they, no less than men, have other shit in life to worry about than all the things that concern little old me. Of the problem of gender. That many men say, like my friend Louis, that everything is fine now. And that many men do nothing to change it. If you are a man and you walk into a restaurant with a woman and the waiter greets only you, does it occur to you to ask the waiter, why haven't you greeted her? Does it occur to you to do that for yourself? If I walk into a restaurant, as has happened, and uh, the host or hostess greets someone else in my party, but not me personally, I don't think that I'm being disrespected. I don't think, oh my god, uh, what is this great colossal injustice that's just been exacted against me? I go, oh, I didn't, well, I don't even actually think about it. I've never, I, I can't recall ever having consciously thought, oh my god, someone in my party got greeted and I didn't. It's not a big deal for me. I don't care about it. Similarly, if, I walk, if we walk in and I get greeted and you don't, guess what? <laughs> I don't care about it, just the same. And it's not because you're a woman and I'm a man. And it's not because there's an injustice going on or that I don't care about certain kinds of issues. Well, it actually is that I don't care about that particular issue. Uh, it, it's that you care about it and you expect me to do it too. In other words, the problem here is I have committed the greatest crime that I could. Failing to live up to the expectation of what it is you think should be important to me. And it simply isn't. It's not important to me on my own behalf. You should not be surprised that it's not important to me on your behalf. Curiously, it is important to you on your own behalf, but you insist that it's I who has to do the work for you. No, ma'am. Feminism is an ideology about the entitlement of women to the exclusion of men. No man, qua man, says, oh my God, I got disrespected. Why aren't women standing up and being up in arms about this? It's for the same reason that when you suffer the great indignity of not being the person greeted at the party when you walk in, that men don't stand up and think it's a great injustice. Because, as it happens, it actually isn't. Or, to the extent that you think it is, you have a voice, I'm told, you need to do the work for the issues you care about. Have a great day, madam.